Now that they have the tile uh, over the opening in the hatch, that has uh, effectively uh, sealed off the source of the GM2. And uh, so Tim is now removing the uh, duct from the purge vent and drain uh, system, PVD. Thanks so much. Discovery Houston for the entire crew, come check. CDR, loud and clear. DLP, MS1. MS2. MS3. MS4. MS5. Discovery, we read you all loud and clear. For Dex, I have updates, uh, one update to your NOCOM uh, boundary on page 2-4 of the flip book. That's great. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. He's better off with pressing. The space shuttle is planned for launch today from Complex 39. Although an accident during the first one half minute of flight is unlikely, some safety precautions are necessary. A potential danger exists from toxic vapors contained in any cloud formed as a result of a launch mishap. In the event of an accident, all KSC personnel, news media, and invited guests on the Kennedy Space Center should take shelter in the nearest air-conditioned facility as quickly as possible. Those viewing the launch on NASA Causeway or at a launch viewing site not near an air-conditioned facility should take shelter in a bus or car with the windows closed. In the event of a mishap, please await further instructions, which will follow. For the firing of one seat, after two minutes, 20 minutes, all problems to train that require a countdown clock hold will be reported to the NTD on channel 2 and 2, together with a recommendation. For all manual holds after two minutes, 5 minutes, the countdown clock will continue until two minutes, 31 seconds, unless the recommendation is to hold at the next milestone is necessary. After two minutes, 31 seconds, only cutoff is available, and will result in a recycle for two minutes, 20 minutes. For a cutoff, the pro word TGLM gift cutoff will be used. 25 seconds remain in the hold. As we come out of this hold, Discovery's onboard computers will transition to the terminal phase of the countdown configuration. And following this, the computer memory of the five general purpose computers on Discovery will be checked to ensure the programs have been properly stored. The purchase of three onboard cryogenic fuel cells will soon be underway. Fuel cells are the small power plants that use liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to produce Discovery's electricity during the mission. T minus nine minutes, fifty five seconds and counting. The closeout crew is back at the AD-11 roadblock where they could return to the pad if needed. That's our OMG. I'll give you step 1070, the KAP area is cleared to launch. This area over here. We can't see it. Hey, Rob, thanks. I did. Hey, do you see that? Copy that. No CC, MCD. This is shuttle launch control. T minus nine minutes in holding. Forty-one minutes remain in our hold, and everything is on course for the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery at 6.21 a.m. Eastern Time. When the count resumes, the ground launch sequencer will be in control of all critical operations. This master computer program will issue all of the commands necessary to perform the final critical tasks required to put the vehicle in the final launch configuration. The ground launch sequencer monitors about a thousand different critical orbital functions during the final nine minutes of the count to make certain they do not fall out of limits. All systems are go, weather is green, no concerns at this point.
so much longer, you know? So we are on target for a liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery to begin STS-131 at 621 a.m. and 25 seconds. <laughs> And we see the space station traveling over the Kennedy Space Center on NASA television. It just passed the moon. A bright, a bright dot in the sky. Uh, residents throughout the world can find sighting opportunities by going to NASA's website at www.nasa.gov and looking for sightings. The space station is longer than a football field. Its solar arrays span 240 feet and it's 45 feet tall. It's a large object, it's getting bigger all the time. Six permanent crew members are there today, about to be joined by the seven crew members of Space Shuttle Discovery to conduct science in space. Chair, yes, go ahead. L minus 15, record activation. At this time, the International Space Station is about 90% complete by mass and 98% complete by habitable volume. T minus five minutes and counting. TLS is go for orbiter APU start. TLC perform APU start. TLC in work. The launch team has terminated liquid oxygen replenished to the external tank and is now initiating lock strain back. OPC CDR heater reconfigure is complete. T minus four minutes and 30 seconds. LTC, PLT, AP start is complete. Copy. All three APUs are up and running. T minus four minutes, yeah, try it again. We'll five seconds and counting. See us, we're up in them. No, I'm, I don't know. The yeah, is good for first peak of four. Okay. All right, well, see ya. The final helium purge of the three main engines is underway in preparation for main engine start. <laughs> you know people are going to lean over. <laughs> the final test of the flight control surfaces is being conducted. This is a programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of all the flight control surfaces, the elevons, speed brakes, and rudder. And the main engines are being gimbal gimbaled through a pre-programmed series of maneuvers as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes, 15 seconds and counting. T minus three minutes and counting. Final pressurization of the external tank's liquid oxygen tank is underway. TLS is go for ET LA2 pressurization. And we are completing the purge of the shuttle's main engines. T minus two minutes, 39 seconds and counting. TLC, clear copy warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. And the gaseous oxygen vent hood, or beanie cap, is being retracted away from the top of the external tank. T minus two minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Discovery copies visors and O2 flow. T minus two minutes and counting. Liquid hydrogen replenish on the external tank is now being terminated. T minus one minute, 44 seconds and counting. All systems are go.
90 seconds away from the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. <laughs> T-minus one minute, 15 seconds and counting. T-minus one minute. The ground launch sequencer will verify that the three main engines are ready to start. The booster joint heaters are being deactivated at this time. We're transferring to orbiter internal power. Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. T minus 38 seconds and counting. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. PLS is good for auto sequence start. T minus 25 seconds. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds and the sound suppression water system has been activated. We have a go for main engine start. Three engines up and ready. Three, two, one. Zero, booster ignition, and a liftoff of Discovery, blazing a trail to scientific discoveries aboard space station. Houston Discovery, Will Kildrath. All right, the Will Discovery. more than four and a half million pounds and now uh, one minute and 27 seconds into the flight the main engines and solid rocket boosters have reduced that weight by about half solid rocket, bo rocket boosters alone are burning, burning 11,000 pounds of propellant per second and the external tank is now 3,000 pounds lighter than it began discovery is now 21 miles away from its launch pad and uh, 22 miles in altitude traveling 2,700 miles per hour. All three main engines are working just as expected. The three fuel cells are generating power and the three auxiliary power units are all producing pressure. In short, everything performing well. Two minutes and seven seconds into the STS-131 mission. The booster officer in the mission control center has confirmed solid rocket booster separation. All systems continuing to, continuing to function well. Two orbital maneuvering system engines on Discovery's tail are now firing as well, providing the shut on extra boost into orbit. Engine burn will last one minute and 44 seconds. Discovery, two engine tail. Discovery copy, two engine tail. That call indicates that Discovery can now reach Rome and Spain should one of the three main engines fail. However, all three of those main engines are currently working well. Two minutes and 59 seconds into the flight, and Discovery is now 79 miles away from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, 48 miles in altitude, and traveling at 4,500 miles per hour. The 
initial discovery office seeing the first of many sunrises at the FTS 131 mission. Discovery is now flying too high and too fast to return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure. That's not currently a problem, however, as all engines are continuing to perform as expected. Four minutes and 15 seconds into Discovery's fall, shuttles traveling 6,000 miles per hour, at an altitude of 63 miles, and uh, is 181 miles away from Kennedy Space Center. Should two of the shuttle's three main engines fail after this point, it can still reach a safe, though lower than planned orbit, as that call from Capcom Wick Stokow indicated. Discovery is now five minutes and 14 minutes. Discovery is now five minutes Also, Capcom Wick Stokow, they're letting Commander Alan Poindexter know. So Discovery will cut off the three main engines as planned, and then he has to go ahead then to pitch Discovery up to allow for photos of the external tank to be taken after its external, after its separation. And there is the external tank separation. Eight minutes and 53 seconds into the STS-130 mission. Discovery now safely in orbit. 66 miles above the Earth and traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. Also, uh, 1,065 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. 